In Burlington, Ontario, we have uh, Ray on the line. Hi there, Ray. Uh, good day. Uh, David, I just like your investment views on pipelines like Enbridge or Kinder Morgan as an example, because it seems as soon as the word pipeline is heard, people seem to gather around for a ride these days. <laughs> so, so I'd like your general views on this investment at this time. Thank you. Sure. So, Ray, pipelines have been a big part of our investment portfolios over the last couple of years, and frankly, they continue to be. Um, in our business, it's all about finding what we would call revaluation candidates, where something's changed for the better, and not only are you going to get paid what you expect, but where you might, what you might get paid may grow a lot faster than you think, and you may get higher prices. There is an army of people who will tell us how expensive the pipeline stocks are right now relative to the last 10 years, and they are. But the fact is most of the midstream energy infrastructure companies will grow their cash flow 10 to 20 percent a year for the next five years because of the boom that's going on in oil and gas in North America. These are long life contracts they have with big customers, very bankable projects, high uh, likelihood that they can manage their expenses. Uh, and if you're getting that much faster cash flow growth, you're going to get faster dividend growth and they should trade at a higher multiple. So the simple analogy I'd make is in the late 90s, we paid high prices for telecom equipment companies because there wasn't enough bandwidth in the pipe to move energy, or sorry, move uh, uh, data through the internet. Today, there's not enough bandwidth in the system to move energy to market. So you want to invest in those kinds of shortages of supply. And I think the pipeline companies are going to be very attractive for a long time. And there's lots of people just waiting under the surface to buy these on pullbacks. And give us your favorite name. Well, we're going to talk about, we'll talk about one today, but IPL is a big favor of ours. Mm -hmm. Kiera is a big favorite of ours. Um, we've got a basket of them, uh, but we'll talk about an energy infrastructure company later on. All right. Uh, let's talk to Ivan now. He's in uh, Toronto. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Golco, please. Uh, just wonder, is it a good to buy today or wait for after the earnings? Uh, what is the prediction of earnings? Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Ivan, uh, I can in, um, uh, intellectually see the value of owning gold given that every country on earth seems to be trying to devalue their currency. Having said that, the gold producers are having a very difficult time coming in on budget uh, and meeting expectations. Price of gold continues to be sloppy. It may just be this as a consolidation after the big move over the last few years. But in the meantime, we're in a bull market. So when you're in a bull market, you focus on the things that are working, not what you hope may work. So we are not value investors where we say we're going to buy something and hope that the opinions change down the road. I would avoid gold producers at this point. I can see that they're cheap, but nobody seems to care at this point. So I think that I would avoid really any of the gold producers until you see a meaningful turn both in the price of gold and in the participation of the gold stocks in this rally. Sounds like sound advice. Uh, let's uh, talk to John now. He's in uh, Pickering. Go ahead. Hi, Mark. Um, very good show. Thank Day you. and night, 24-7. Great, thanks. Um, Dave, we never miss you when you're on the, on the show, whether you're in the evening or in the morning. But anyway, uh, my question is about CSX Railways in the U.S. Uh, if, uh, if that's not your sort of a, uh, pick, then uh, please recommend something sure. in industrial and transport. Sure. Thank you, and have a good day. So, John, you've hit on one of the core themes that we've been focused in for quite some time, and that's the rails. Uh, this is in some ways a derivative of the call on uh, midstream energy assets because, of course, without pipeline capacity, how does the oil get to market? A bunch of the, bunch of the companies are shipping by rail. Uh, CSX is more specifically an East Coast rail uh, and less a participant in that. Uh, we like CP, closer to home. Uh, it's performing extremely well market-wise. Uh, there's probably three or four years of strong volume growth in, in oil. Uh, and so it's, it's one, that we think, one that we think looks pretty good. So I'd prefer to own that. There's one of the stronger performing groups in the market. Uh, it's also a beneficiary of a little bit stronger North American economy. And I'm not banking on a lot stronger. We're just saying just generally slow improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that this is a good way to participate. Have you been uh, shaving any of your positions in, uh, in CP, or, or has it become maybe uh, uh, too big in terms of a weighting in some of your portfolios? No, it's a larger weighting, but it continues to be very solid. I mean, technically, if you look at the way the stock's behaving, it's a very tight price pattern. Every time it pulls back, there's buyers underneath the surface. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is something that's very attractive to us. We don't like to see volatility. It means that 
there's, there's lots of interested parties, uh, and I think this is one that could continue to perform well. One thing you uh, also say is that you, you want to let your winners run. Sometimes there's a psychology where people get nervous and they feel the need to sell, right? Well, as, as I mentioned before, when a revaluation begins, it often goes on a lot longer than you think. And you have to keep in mind, there will be an army of people prepared to tell you how expensive it is relative to recent history. Mm -hmm. And that almost always starts like a third of the way through the move. So, you know, listen, I think that we're in a market that's being driven by liquidity. That's likely to continue. And in that environment, I think these companies are going to do well. All right. Interesting stuff. Uh, we have uh, lots of demand here for David, and not surprisingly, through calls and tweets and emails. And uh, we've uh, cobbled a bunch together in the Market Call Minute. Dean in Kelowna, B.C., called in about to SBA Communications. Uh, this is on the NASDAQ, another tower company which you hold. Yep. Uh, this is a pullback that makes sense in this market. There's been a little bit of rotation to, to, to more economically sensitive stocks. I'd continue to own the stock. It uh, should continue to do well. David in Orangeville, Ontario, on Crescent Point, CPG. Is this one you hold with a nice juicy yield? Yeah, we, we do not own Crescent Point currently. Uh, we do have a couple of oil uh, companies. We own some Vermilion. We own some Tourmaline. Uh, but uh, this is not one of the leaders currently. All right, uh, Glenn's in Maple, Ontario, Blackberry, BB. Glenn, I've looked at the device. I think it's a great device. I think they've got some hurdles to get over. Uh, I would love to see it be successful going forward here, uh, but uh, I think they're going to have to prove out the story a little bit. Jim Balsillie uh, selling the rest of his shares today. Uh, Andrew in uh, Toronto on uh, Fortis. Yeah, not going to be one of the most exciting stocks to own, uh, but very predictable. They've had very good dividend growth over time. Stocks pulled back in the last few days, uh, support around $33. Um, I'd hold the stock here. Um, I think it likely holds in pretty well. Uh, Jim's in Pickering, Ontario on Cameco. Is it time to buy a company like this in uh, this sector? Yeah, we're not there. Uh, it certainly looks like it's getting turned around. I think if it traded through sort of $24, it would get a lot more interesting technically. Um, energy is not the first spot we would be focused in right now. Derek uh, has an email out of uh, Kitchener, Ontario on General Electric, that huge deal with uh, Comcast the other day getting rid of uh, the rest of NBC Universal. Yeah, so General Electric falls into two positive camps currently. The conglomerates in general are doing pretty well because of the diversified cash flow streams. Uh, and companies that are in industrial equipment, industrial machinery are big beneficiaries. I guess the third thing is that they're selling a lot of gas turbine uh, engines, uh, and all three should be positive for GE. So uh, good dividend yield, 3% plus, you're going to see dividend growth, uh, lots of stability in their cash flow, diversified cash flow stream looks interesting. And you hold this? We do not You're own not. it, but we own some other machinery companies. All right, very good. A short pause here with uh, David Burroughs. We'll uh, come back and uh, take a look at his past picks and then top picks today.